lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim. God bless you. I am Apostle Irvin Whitlow, and I want to invite you to listen to Making Marriage Meaningful. Join me as we talk about marital matters. It's real. It's raw. It's relevant. Every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central, on Elation Radio.
The blessing of the Lord be upon you. Thank you for joining Making Marriage Meaningful. I'm your host, the Pastor Irvin Whitley, and we're grateful to the Lord to have this opportunity to join you tonight. Uh, technical difficulties has tried to interrupt the broadcast, but we are here, and we're in expectation of the Lord saying something and doing something supernatural tonight. Now, let me make this clear. I do not claim to be a relational expert, but I do share the things that God has given to me to share that will hopefully help you in your marriage, in your relationship that is considering marriage. Uh, so do know that it is real, it is raw, it is relevant. Hopefully that something that is said between myself and those who are assisting me will help you, even if it's a nugget that you can make use of. But tell somebody that making marriage meaningful is lying. We're getting ready to go even greater and further in this tonight. In <sighs> Jesus' name. Now, saying that, let me uh, welcome to my broadcast tonight the host of the Pastor's Corner, who is also the pastor of Power to Stand Outreach Ministries. He is the one, the only, my good brother. He is Overseer Elder Ernest Richard. Are you with us, sir? Yes, I am. The Lord bless you, my brother. It's another day that the Lord has kept us. I don't know about you, but I feel a rejoicing in my spirit. I feel like any time we have any chaos or turmoil turmoil getting on the airwaves, that means God has a blessing in store for those who are listening. So with that being said, let me step back so you can step up. We can all get up, go up, grow up, show up, and let this whole place blow up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me see if my other brother, the chief apostle of Volume of the Book International Ministries, is with us out of uh, the new the New Haven, uh, Connecticut area. That is Chief Apostle Vincent L. Smith. Are you with us, sir? Well, 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 grace and peace be unto you tonight. It is a joy, it is a joy to be on the broadcast again. Amen. And it's time to get in the Word and excite somebody's life. Ignite somebody's fire and turn on somebody's spiritual desire. Hallelujah. I love it. Amen. Amen. We are so grateful to the Lord. Amen for you joining us. Is there any other callers who are here tonight? Please speak now. Forever hold your peace. Bless the Lord. Amen. All right. So, again, we're going to be talking. Uh, tonight uh, to people in their relationships, particularly marriage. Um, And we do invite you to share your thoughts, your concerns, your questions with us. We'd love to be helpful to you somehow through the word of the Lord. So you may call in at 646-564-9842. That is 646-564-9842. We'll be happy to uh, talk with you. In the meantime, let us pray and get into this word again. Uh, Father, we thank you and we bless you and give you praise, honor, and glory for the opportunity to be on the airways again that we may share with your people the things that you have given to us that will help them to be help, become healthy, wealthy, wise, and strong in their marriage, to become more productive in the name of Jesus. We are trusting you that you're going to give us the right words that those who are listening will hear and will take heed and will receive from you. In the matchless name of Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory right now. We thank you that the enemy is defeated, and we have total victory in every area of our life. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Let me read this scripture to you. Again, it says in Genesis 2:18, the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was their, the name thereof. 
Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help me for him. And the Lord God called the deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. He took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made me a woman and brought her unto the man. Adam And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and the mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, were not ashamed. <laughs> well, they were. Uh, I know they were. I guess you had to emphasize that one, huh? Well, I mean, there's a lot to going into that, and I'm going to deal with that eventually, about them being naked, naked, naked. I'm going to deal with that. And they weren't ashamed. They didn't have a problem with some stuff that people have a problem with today. And when they're wearing everything what they're wearing is going to bed, wondering why he don't want her and whatnot. Amen. Praise God. People wash properly. They don't have to worry about being naked. Okay, let me go on. It's raw. It's real. It's relevant. Let me say this again. We've been talking for a number of weeks about matching God's meaning. Matching God's meaning. We have discovered again, time and time again, that marriage is both God's design and institution. Okay? Nobody has made it but God. I don't care how many laws they try to make to change it. You cannot, I don't care what they say is right on the level of humanity, you cannot redefine and redesign what God has already implemented. I don't care how many states say it's okay. I don't care how many people agree with it. It still is not what God ordained. I'm so sick and tired of this nonsense with a man and a man and a woman and a woman. And listen, I don't hate them. I do not hate them. But their activity, that listen, the, if a man wants to go in the back door of his wife, that's okay. That's understandable. But a man don't have no business in the back door of another man. Let's just be truthful. And I don't understand how women don't want, these women want a woman and don't want a man, but yet you want the toy that represents a man. Something was wrong. Somebody confused. Okay. okay. Let me get back to it. You got to match God's design. You gotta you gotta match God's need. It's gotta be the way God made it. That's why a lot of people's relationship is not working because they're not doing it the way God made it. It's not coming together the way God put it together. Okay? There is a principle, a standard, a status, there is a blueprint that God has designed. I don't care how many people try to rewrite the blueprint. You can't rewrite Something that God has inscripted himself. I don't care how you try to reword it, how you try to re-understand it. Uh, you cannot change it. It belongs to God. It's God's idea. Point blank, period. And so to try to live your life uh, without God's design for your particular marriage is an issue. So we've been talking about how God does things, and what we said is that what God does is he first forms things. He first forms. We've been talking about this again, that form is to combine, to create, conceive in one's mind. So God says, this is what I want to do. I want to create relationships. So he created relationships between uh, animals and made male and female and animals. But but when it came to man, he didn't make male and female, but the male and female were already together. God says, let me pull the female out of the male because the male has need of the female that I created. Oh, I'm in the book. I'm in the book. This is what God did. The Bible says this. So when you are in the dating stage or you are in the courting stage, you're considering marriage. 
God determines that your desire has to match his design. Now, some of you have said, but the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Yes, he will give you the desires of your heart when your desire matches his design. God don't give you stuff just because you want it. It don't work like that, baby boo. It's not that way, my dude. It don't happen like that. It's got to be God's design. That's the only thing that works. That's the only thing that will come together. That's the only thing that will make sense. Now, why is it God's design? Because God is concerned about society, and marriage is the basis of human society, and society is reinforced by marriage. It is the basic institution found in all human society because no other union of man and woman meets all the requirements of mating, homemaking, love, and personality development at the level of biological, psychological, social, ethical, and spiritual advancement. Listen to me. The way God designed it is so that you have a sense of stability about who you are, who you are meant to be, and what you are meant to do. The reason society is messed up is because marriages have been messed up. And the only reason marriages are messed up is simply because he wants to match God's design. Saying that to say this, that if we don't match God's design, we can only see disaster. And so what the devil does is he says, let me get in and create disaster. That's why people don't know how to handle that for better and for worse, or that richer and poorer or in sickness and in health. They don't know how to handle that because nobody really gets married for the worse. Nobody gets married for the poorer. No one gets married for the sickness. Nobody don't really want to deal with that. And so when those things happen, all of a sudden now we want out. When there's misery, we want out. When there's disappointment, when needs are not met, we want out. When there's no sexual acti- no sexual activity taking place, we want out. And we're, we're, we're nerve-wrecked and we're miserable and we're unhappy and we're trying to fix it and we can't fix it because it is not God's design. Your desire has to match God's design. I know you want to say some Apostle Smith on that wise. Come on. Man, man of God, I, I, I'm trying to listen in. My phone is having difficulties. I'm going. I'm going to yield over to overseer. Amen. All right. And I pray God that the phone receives a healing apostle. Good evening to you, sir. Well, yeah, I'm going to agree with you on that. And I, I was listening to some of the things you said. Uh, and when you uh, made mention of uh, certain things, and you made mention of a scripture in Hebrew about the bed being honorable, the mar- uh, bed being undefiled, I'm going to leave it like that. I thought it was kind of funny, so forgive me if I laughed out loud. I just kind of found it not amusing, but kind of funny. It's an amazing thing that they want to play with toys, but they don't want the real toy. All right. Uh, you know, I understand it's an assault <laughs> weapon can cause some stuff to happen. But the bottom line is that you're right. Marriage has to line up with God's meaning, God's principle, God's word, God's way, God's will. We gotta stop trying to redesign what God has already structured. When the, when it was made when the writing in Genesis says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife that twain flesh may become one, people have to recognize and realize that oneness starts in the spirit and worked its way into that natural realm. Too many people are trying to become one in more ways than one. And sometimes you end up in the ER because you're one, but you have to be separated. Oh, God, am I going off the deep end? I'm trying not to uh, cut up here tonight, Apostle. I just want to just kind of be part of your show. But really, when you get right down to it in in all seriousness, We as a people have to recognize and realize that God's way is the best way. There simply is no other way. I don't care how you try to come. Jesus gave gave a statement, but in that statement you find the principle when he said you must come in at the door. When you're going to come into marriage, the doorway doorway is the base principles ordained by God. 
End of story. All right, back in your hands, sir. Hey, Amen. So, so we're talking about this because, again, people are thinking, oh, why is my marriage not working? People are thinking, oh, well, I want to get married, but I've seen too many things go wrong. People are saying, you know what, I would get married, but after what I saw, I, how could I? Not me, oh, no. So we developed this thing called this relationship chair. And this relationship yeah. chair constitutes the foundation of commitment. And we have already made it clear that if you're not going to commit finishing, you don't need to commit to starting. Amen. Let me say it again. If you're not going to commit to finishing, then you don't need to commit to starting. Because this is not something you can just get into and then casually get out of. You, you don't do that. You don't, you don't do that. Because if you do that, you do more damage than you do good. Listen, listen. I, I know that some people don't want to hear it, but you can't walk in today and because it ain't going the way you want it to go, say, okay, I'm out. Mm-hmm. You can't just say, all right, you know what? I'm in it, but I changed my mind. No, you don't. You don't just. This, this is. It just doesn't work like that. You know. You don't just make up in your mind. Okay, well, I just don't want to be bothered. You've got to be committed to this thing. You saying that you want this kind of relationship? You want this kind of of of, of lifestyle, a marital lifestyle, for the purpose of pleasing your sexuality? You can't get in here today and then get out because she didn't do this and he didn't do that. Oh no! I I I I, I come across people who are, who say they're they're sapiosexual or a demisexual. Which means Alrighty. that there, and so many one one means that you're attracted to someone who can hold an intellectual conversation. The other one means you're not attracted uh, to someone until they can penetrate your intellect to arouse you, so to speak. Okay, and so the, listen, there is more than that when you're saying I do. You got to make up in your mind before you say I do that you know what it takes to make sure. That when you do, you don't turn around and say, oh, never mind, I don't. Listen to me. God designed this for society's purpose. Our world is messed up because families are messed up, and families messed up because marriage is messed up. So why? Because people are committed to it. So we understand that there is a commitment at the foundation. And then we talked about there are there are friendship and there's a different there are different degrees of friendship. You have your acquaintance, you have your casual friend, you have your um close friend, and then you have your intimate friend. And most people do not get beyond a casual friend when they hit to close friends because they jump over stuff and become something that they shouldn't become all because they made a connection. But just because you made a connection is no good if you don't know how to keep that connection. Let me let me go a little further. Let me go a little further. We started talking about, about jump in. Jump in it. Jump in it. Yes, listen. I, I'm so glad my I, I finally found my speaker button. <laughs> listen, but in talking about commitment, I, I want to throw that other C word in there with it too. Amen, because some folks are committed, but they don't want to honor the covenant. Come on. Okay. See, uh, 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 commitment, well, and I, I'm not trying to belittle what you were saying because you're dead on target. So don't nobody get my statement wrong. Commitment got them, got them to the altar, but the covenant, they didn't want to hold on to. My God. See, the covenant will make you stay in there, amen, up through hell and high water, and the water can be coming up to your thigh, amen, and you say, but I'm going to hang in here because there got to be a drain hole somewhere. But the thing mm-hmm. about it is, amen, when you are into the covenant, and I talk as one that has been married, amen, and have been out of marriage, amen. When you get into commitment, when you get
make it into a commitment and then transfer into covenant. As Apostle Whitlow said, you cannot get in all happy. Amen. And let's tell the truth. You can't get in all happy because you're going to have some sex. You can't get in all happy. Amen. Because now you finally got somebody that's going to treat you. Amen. To Jimmy's or to Red Lobster. Amen. Or to a nice steak every now and then. Amen. You can't be all happy. Amen. Because you're going to get a new outfit, maybe a fur coat, and all this. All that is temporal. But when the rubber meets the road and the problems start coming and and situations start happening, are you still with the covenant? Unless Unless it is a situation where you entered into something that God was not doing in the first place because we do make flesh decisions. Yes, we do. Now, okay. now we don't, uh, that's not our discussion tonight. We'll have to come back another week with that about these flesh decisions because sometimes we, we cross over into the covenant and our flesh was talking and we find out once we get in the covenant and some things start going down that we should have stayed where we were at and allowed oh. God to do what he needed to do in our lives. Amen. If I can, can I jump in on the back end of that? He talked about jump covenant. In. We know scriptures that says a three-strand cord is not easily broken. And I'd like to believe that the team in every marriage consists of Jesus, the husband, and the wife. But I also want to say that that three-strand cord is not just the Lord Jesus being the center of everything. It is literally that covenant. And it is when that covenant is broken that that three-strand cord becomes broken. It comes, it's when that covenant is broken is when it begins to see the downfall. It was, if you could use, the, use your imagination, I know most of us, some of you out there in Radio Land have probably skied at some point in some place. I've never skied a day in my life, and I'm not even going to pretend like I ever was a skier. But if he, a skier has three different slopes that he goes down. The bunny slope, which is the easiest slope, it's cleared out. There's nothing there. Uh, getting that with the covenant, those are the first years of your of your marriage when, like you said, Apostle Smith, you're all googly-eyed and, you know, you're all up on each other and you're holding hands and you kissy-kissy and you're walking down the street and you couldn't be separated. I don't care if they took a chainsaw and tried to put it between you. you are, so you're sticking together like glue. Now there's that slope called the intermediate slope where there's a couple of rocks, maybe a couple of trees. But still, it's clear enough for you to get through. Think about this for a minute. You get to that stage in marriage and see, like you said, Apostle uh, Whitlow, I heard you say earlier about those people trading in their marriages, and I'm going to add something to that, like they're trading in cards. Sometimes people get to the intermediate slope, and now they're thinking to themselves, was I supposed to do this? I often say, and Apostle Smith, you made mention of those. We said we're going to talk about another one, but let's throw it in there so that we can whet somebody's appetite. There are those individuals who marry in the permissive will of God and not the perfected will of God, <clears throat> meaning they did not seek God's face for answers to the issue and to the problem, not to mention the fact that they left baggage from probably a recent relationship, and they're bringing that baggage into this brand new quote unquote supposed covenant. Last one I'm going to mention in talking about that ski trip, there is what they call the professional slope or the advanced slope. I mean, you've got trees, you've got rocks, you've got Bambi in the gang, everything and anything that could get in your way is there. You can go down the hill nice and smooth in the beginning, but the steeper the hill gets, the faster you go. And then things become a blur to the point where if you're not careful and you don't watch over your marriage, husbands, you're the prophet, priest, and king, which means you are the servant leader of your 
It's your responsibility to make sure that that marriage stays intact. A happy wife means a happy life. And I'm not going to go through the whole detail. The bottom line is simply this. If you get to the advanced slope and you take your eyes off the prize for a split second, rest assured you're heading for disaster. That's all I wanted to add in there. Amen. I wanted to check. Amen. Do we have any other callers online tonight? Yeah, yeah. Who's that? This is way busy, way busy. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Great. All right. Yeah. Did well, you want you know, to I, say I, I, something? Huh? Yes, you Come on, let me hear what yes, you say. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna talk about. I'm gonna talk about. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the love of God. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm gonna talk about right now. Um, you know, the Word of God is 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 what became alive to me. The Word of God, the written Word. You can open up the Bible, and it's the written Word right there. Um, but the written Word became the living Word of God to me. And when I when I when I, when I was thinking, man, God's talking to me. You know what I'm saying? And, and I never, I never heard God talk to me before. You know what I'm saying? And He was showing me myself. And when I seen myself in His love, then I had, I got to learn the way that God sees me. And He made, He made me perfect because that sacrifice that He made was a perfect sacrifice. Remember Christ? Christ came down out of heaven. Heaven was above Jerusalem. Y'all know the story, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, when, when Christ came down, that means that he he came down to become a servant, meaning he put on a, he put on he came in the likeness of of sinful flesh of man, and and it wasn't Joseph and Mary had anything to do with this. You don't know, understand. This is spiritually speaking. This ain't got nothing to do with looking out your two eyeballs like the people in the first century were doing. They couldn't see their Messiah spiritually. They said, well, that's Jesus. We know Jesus, Joseph and Mary's kid. Well, as soon as you think that's Joseph and Mary's kid, we go back to the natural. We ain't talking about the natural. This is supernatural. You understand? Yeah. We got Amen. Amen. We appreciate you for sharing that. Amen. And we give God praise for you. Amen. So here we are. We want to understand this thing. That, that here we're developing this relationship chair. We have this foundation of commitment. We have dealt with this thing called friendship. We move into this thing called fellowship. We understand that fellowship has four parts to it. We understand right. communion, communication, community, and contribution. Now, we've talked about communion is having a share. Communion or having common ground, a common denominator. All right? All right? Then from that common denominator, we share from that common denominator. All right? That's our communication, being able to voice our thoughts, our opinions, those things that we have in common, what we seek to share about it. And then we talked about being in our own community. Developing our own community, which it becomes very sacred because you don't want any and everyone in your community. As if you consider, there are some communities that are gated, and some communities when they're gated, you have to have a special code to get in, or you have to know someone on the inside who's willing to allow you inside. See, we uh-huh. one of the, let me tell you something. Let me thank thank you, God. Since I'm here, I want to share this with you. Your marriage is not meant to be an open relationship. Let no, me it say it again. Your marriage is not meant to. That should have got a hand clap right there, Miss Kimmy. That your marriage is not meant to be an open relationship. It is meant to be between you and the one you are married to. That's why there's so much mess going on in Hollywood because they've got these open relationships, these open marriages, meaning as long as I come home to you, it's okay who else I kick it with. No, baby. I ain't letting mine kick it with nobody else. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. And 
because I ain't kicking it with nobody else. So why am I going to let you kick it with somebody else just because the devil is a dirty dog liar? That's all my – I'm going to say it just like I will. If, if it's my wife, and I'm going to say it just the way I feel it. If it's my wife, that's my booty. I, I'm sorry, and that it is only my duty to please that group. Okay, I know somebody ain't going to like this, but I told you this is real, this is raw, this is relevant. And that's why there's so much chaos in this day and time, because you're trying to get everybody else to do your job. My Come God. on, I know you want to say something. Uh, over oh, here. no, Come you on. know I want to say something, and, uh, you know, and, and I'm going to say this here. There are folk who are oh. thinking about they're not thinking in terms of monogamy. They're thinking in terms of polygamy. They want the cake. They want to eat it, too. They want to be up in the batter and then create some new batter when that batter gets what they call old. I mean, I'm not even understanding. First and foremost, I have to simply say, men, let's just be real here. If you gave love in the capacity that you have the ability to give love, other than your family, and your children, when it comes down to your spouse, there is, you, you, you can't handle but one. You can't handle but one. Why men but today one. and even some women today are trying to take on two, three, and four, and five partners, and then they can't figure out why STDs are at an all-time high, why AIDS was running rampant in the 80s all the way up into the late 2000s, and why chlamydia seems to be at an all-time high, and gonorrhea seems to be running crazy, and Herpes is going foolish. I mean, these things didn't happen by accident. I mean, I could talk to the single person thinking about marriage, lose those extra partners, because when you said, I do, you will. I promise you. Let me stop right there for a second. Just for a come second. On over, uh, come, come on, Chief Apostle. Well, you know, <laughs> we, we got some crazy folk in the land that, that think, uh, anything goes nowadays. They mm-hmm. think anything goes. They think any way is acceptable. And, and not only uh, do they think these things in a natural sense, but uh, I, I, I'm not going to say excuse the way I say this. I just want you to receive it. We can't do whatever we want to do. And then tell, and then stick out behind in God's face and say, forget oh. your way and forget your law. Hey, I'm going to, they get this Frank Sinatra spirit, I'm going to do it my way. My goodness. Yeah. What kind of foolishness do we have going on now? America is in trouble. America yeah. is under punishment. I said it, I said it. I said it more than four years ago. I must say it again. I stood up in the pulpit by the command of God, and as much as I was happy to have the first or the so-called first African-American president, I stood in the pulpit at Morningstar and told them, America has just signed up for punishment. With the president mm. signed for same sex marriage. Amen. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? And, and look at and us so now. What, look at us now. Oh yeah. And and we and so come, that we come from eight years. We come from eight years of prosperity. Eight men to now. Uh, uh, thanks be to God, the stock market came up a little bit yesterday. Amen. But we're on the verge of a crash like we've never had before. My God. Yeah. Totally. Because I'm totally. telling y'all, if this stock if this stock market crash this time, it's going to be worse than the 20s. Amen. That, but it's true. And so we need to it's be true. careful. We need to be careful with all this craziness. That we got going. Let me let me just let me just talk for a minute to somebody. I want somebody to understand that you can't live this thing called marriage all willy nilly. You 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 can't <laughs> live it all melancholy, all mm-hmm. all lays on fair. I, I'm using some co- collegiate terms tonight. I want you to understand you can't live this thing. It, the, the way you feel it, I, I, I'm just, I'm just moved by my feelings. Nobody asks you to feel nothing. Amen. 
There you go. For real. Watch this. Watch this now. What we have done. I, I want to tell the own personal thing. If some of us, and I want to talk to, I want to talk to the space for a minute, but I want the world to listen in. Some of us mess around and begin to make plans with people that God wasn't planning with you. Oh. When you get your flesh involved, and I ain't talking about sex, I'm talking about when you get your little feelings and your little butterflies and all this stuff involved, and oh, she's just so cute and so beautiful. He's so handsome. Oh, I just, ooh, he just got them muscles and all that. I'm telling you now, amen, you are headed for a mess. And God is not in it with you. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you now, he's not in it with you. And when you get into these things and it winds up being a mess, uh-huh. it was a mess. That's it was a mess you made. That's right. Listen, even my, listen, chief apostle, even God. Yes. Honors community Notice what he says He says you are A chosen generation A royal priesthood And holy nation A peculiar people God Uh says I have set you apart from myself In other words I made you a sacred community So if God has made us A sacred community How is it that people Do not make their marriage A sacred community Uh How is it that they don't make their A sacred community Come on there overseer I want to jump on that They, They don't make their marriage a sacred community Because A number one They don't honor their marriage They're in their carnality They're under the impression that it's all No holds barred Everything goes I can do what I want when I want Well you know we can go back I mean we can And no disrespect to the LBGQ Whoever them people are You know who I'm talking about Homosexuals, lesbians and those that fit Butchers, dykes and those who think they're men and are you, I'm talking about all of you the truth of the matter is that is a reprobated mind, something that's going against the principles of Almighty God. And for you to stand up and try to legalize a man marrying another man or a woman marrying another woman, you've already violated Scripture. You've already violated principle. You've already violated a God-ordained and God-sustained ordinance. So too many people here are trying to push their agenda and push their way, and they're too busy trying to make people think that, you know, God is loving and God is kind, but God has rules. I mean, let's get real here. If the, if, if the speed limit is 25 and you're going 75 down a 25-mile-an-hour zone and a police officer is standing there with a camera taking your picture, do you think he's going to wave at you as you go by? He's going to stop you and give you a ticket. Why? Because he has rules. The rules say 25. It don't say 75. If it says one man, one woman, it doesn't say Adam and Steve. It doesn't say Eden and Ethel. It doesn't say Jeffrey and Jasper. It says one man, one woman. That's it. Let, let, me, let, let me jump in one more time. Mm-hmm. See, here's the problem. We let stuff slip so much until it looked right when it's not right. Mm. Mm. Romans, the first chapter, took care of that issue the best that we know. Uh-huh. I, want you to, I want you to understand something about that whole homosexual community because that's the proper word altogether. They got all these letters now but it, it, it's just the homosexual community at large. That's what it is. Listen at this. Romans 1 says, first of all, that these were a people that knew the word of God, but chose uh-huh. not to obey it. That's right. Okay? 
So we're mm-hmm. going to get off this. So we're going to get off this stuff. I was born that way, and, and, and because I was molested, and I, and I know some people do. I'm not negating it. Some people do get twisted up when they are molested by their uncle, by their daddy, by their cousin, and it makes them, the devil mm-hmm. puts a spirit in them that makes them feel like, well, this happened to me. Uh, maybe that's the way I should be. I'm not negating that, but I'm just talking truth right now. Mm-hmm. I want you to understand the word of God said they knew the word of God and chose not to obey the word of God. Mm-hmm. And then, listen at the word now, and turn that which was hard in their nature. Let me explain that. That meant God made you a manphalic man, a man to put your penis in a wound, not in somebody's peanut butter. Okay. But now. Penis, yes. Matter of fact, let me tell you right now, you need to obey the word. The word of God lets us know, amen, right there in the book of Romans, that the life you live is so nasty and so, amen, abominable, as the Old Testament called it. He said, because you would not retain God in your knowledge, he said, I'll turn you over to yourself, which is to have a reprobate mind. Amen. Which means Apostle I'm going to let, because you won't get it together, I'm going to turn you over and let you be your own God. Amen. What the word says, that reprobated that, mind. I see how that works out for you. Well, you oh, when AIDS jump, jump on you, when AIDS jump on you, when HIV got you all messed up, amen, with other diseases and things that the doctor can't even give you an answer to. He said, go ahead and be your own God and then see how that works for you when you need help. Mm-hmm. So, so tells me, based upon what you're saying, what this tells me is that people have left the fellowship with the Father and with the Son. That's so if what they it is. The fellowship if they have left the fellowship with the Father and with the Son, then it makes it easy for them to leave fellowship with someone they're considering a permanent relationship with. That That's really what it does. That's really what it does. See, because when you understand fellowship, it's not just communion and communication, but it is a community. That means this community means we are together in this. We belong here. No one else can make this work like we can. No one else can bring to this what we bring. No one else can do in this what we do. So so this is the, listen, what I love about God is he always gives us similarity. He always gives us similarity. And so if we leave fellowship with him, we understand that our life goes down. So it is the same thing with a marital relationship. When you leave the fellowship of your marriage, life goes down. It goes down. But I'm going to tell you why. Because in fellowship, there's not just communion. In fellowship, there's not just communication. In fellowship, there's not just the community. But in fellowship, there is the contribution. Uh That's what I want to pull into. In fellowship, there is the contribution. If you paid attention to the early church, the Bible says that they sold all their possessions and they brought them to the apostles and it was distributed to everyone according to their need and they had all things common because of what they contributed. I'm here at this contribution because I find it to be a tad bit issue that I come into this marriage, this relationship looking for a marriage, having something, and you come in having nothing and wanting it to be all on me. I have a problem with that. Well, I have a problem, I have a problem when I come in and I got a job and you don't even have that. 
I got that, that a problem. Is, when I got 50 cents, you don't have 50 cents to beat me. Well, here it is in a nutshell, Apostle, and I've got to address that only because of the fact that, you know, and we've said this a hundred times before, technically there is a rightness to that, but uh, and biblically there's a rightness to it, but in today's society it has to be a 100-100 pull. You can't just sit down and rest on your laurels and think that, you know, you know you, we know what my job makes. Let's talk finances here for a minute because there are three areas that most marriages have the most problem in, communication, sex, and money. Communication meaning they don't talk to each other, they talk at each other. When you talk about sex, he wants it all the time. She barely wants to get it on, and when you do get it on, she's sitting there playing the game. Oh, baby, and that's all you get. She's waiting for you to do some bad vocal masturbating and to get off of her so that she can go on and roll over and go to sleep. But now when we get down to the third part of money, you know, you got to look at what you have. If your husband, lady, whoever you are listening to, if your husband only uh, 30, let me finish this. If your husband only makes $30,000 a year and you make $180,000 a year, I mean, hold on, time out. You can't wait for a $30,000 job to take care of a $50,000 or $75,000 a year lifestyle. you got to pitch in, sweetheart. Now, if you're the kind of woman that stays home, you're a stay-at-home mom the whole 20 yards, your job is to make sure that that house becomes a home. I'm taxing this from, and, you know, I I thank God, uh, you know, my first wife died and the next one just took off. I'm not even going to get into my history. The point is, I mean, under uh, close to 40-something years of marriage, I'm just looking at some things here. What happened to the 100-100 contribution? This is why I'm jumping in here. Yes, you do, as the head of the house, you do have to try to put your best foot forward, but that's why, woman, you are called wife. One called alongside to help. Nowhere does it say you sit down and do nothing. You have to contribute in one way, some shape, some form, or some fashion. You have to. But let, it's, it's, let, 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 me, let, let, me, let me jump in on that, too. And, and, I, and I sort of, I don't want to defend this, but I do want to make the statement. You cannot also marry somebody who you already know didn't have nothing. They're Thank trying. You. They're trying, but now you're going to talk them down. You're going you're gonna to say bad words to them and all that. They're still making effort. And when you got married to them, they were making effort, but it looked like things just ain't coming together. Shut your uh-huh. mouth, pray, and ask God to work it out. You're supposed Amen. to be there. To be a pusher to eat. Thank you. And watch God do some great things in each other's life. That's what matters. If marriage, here's another word, Apostle Whitlow. Marriage is about enhancement. Mm, That's right. Now, you're going going to. If you. If you have married somebody that's not pushing you or at least believing God with you for the next level of your natural being as well as your spiritual being, believe me, you got the wrong one, baby. Now you got me, that right. Now, I wanna I wanna say this, but before I do, we have a caller on with an area code eight seven two. Could you identify yourself? That's a possible. Apostle William and Sharif Thomas. God bless you, brethren. Oh, God bless you. Oh, my brother. Bless you. I know you want to say something to us. Talk to us. Bless you, my brother. Well, well, good evening, brethren, and I'm just going to be on for a short minute because I was in fellowship, but I'm going to go back to my fellowship in a second. But I believe tonight, I believe, I believe we're talking about tonight. I believe, I believe we're talking about I believe we're talking about making marriage meaningful. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. So I want to make this real simple, but I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a, 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 a Chicago type of parable to help us tonight, brother, and to help somebody. We got we got to help others help ourselves by helping somebody else. Okay, we're gonna use uh-huh. the four mathematic sign. How we gonna do this? Watch this. The plus means 
the blessing of the Lord make it rich, and he added no sorrow. Okay. Subtraction is taken away. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you have life and life more abundantly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Multiplication, multiplication, multiplication. See, watch this. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask for, think, according to the power that works of us. And division means a house divided should not stand. This is what we're saying, because Apostle Sharif and I are married counselors as well. And what we do is we level the playing ground. We don't take sides. We have to rebuke the husband, we rebuke the husband. We have to rebuke the wife, we rebuke the wife. But we have to understand we're living in a world where God is being mocked by marriage, especially through the homosexual agenda. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So in other words, what makes our marriage work and what makes our marriage so successful is that we're a partner in everything. Apostle Sharif and I do everything together. And I mean, when I say everything, I literally mean Apostle Sharif and I do everything together. I always brag Man. about the Christ that's in her because she is my better half. Since God has brought her into my life, I have become a whole lot better. And I just want to help encourage other husbands and other wives out here that you marry for better. Yes, they talk about for better or for worse, but if we place more better uh, emphasis on the better, then when the worst times try to come, the worst times even make us better because the process is the preparation for success. I just want to help somebody tonight because I'm so sick and tired. Apostle Reef and I have declared war on marriage-breaking spirits. So the devil already been sent his walking papers when it comes to thinking he's just going to tear up the covenant of marriage. Think about one of the very first covenants of marriage, Abraham and Sarah. She called him Lord. Why? Because he was representation of the Lord. So this is what we have to do in the body of Christ. We institute the revelation. That, see, now here comes the revelation and the demonstration. The revelation is who so find up a wife, find up a good thing, and obtain favor. See, 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 watch this. Watch this. Watch this, guys. Catch this. Catch this. This is going to bless somebody. The favor of God in the covenant of marriage. That's why I call Apostle Sharif. Now she's not just my good thing. She's my better half because she's the half of me that makes me better. She's the half of me that when I'm feeling insufficient, uh uh-huh, she's able to strengthen me and build me up in the areas where life has torn me down. That's why we have to understand, brethren, that we marry for better, even though worse times will come. We have to understand Understand it to everything as a process, but the process to keep us uh, uh, in preparation for success and not the process leading to a bigger mess. So we just want to help somebody tonight be encouraged. You might be dealing with something in your marriage. Y'all might have already filed papers, but I dare you in Jesus' name to get back in the place of God. And I want to sum this up with one word. Worship. See, when you worship, mm, I feel God. When there is no worship, there is no relationship. That's not just for the church. See, we we want to take we want we want the worship to be for the four walls, but we want the uh, uh, four walls of our house to be the dictatorship. Every devil in hell's a liar. No, where there's no worship, there is no relationship. So I want to help somebody tonight to understand that when you worship the Lord together. When you come together intimately, see, there's a worship spiritually that's going to enhance our worship sexually, and not just sexually, but mentally, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and financially. So I just want to use those four mathematic signs to help somebody tonight understand the simplicity in the face of complexity in today's time. So, mm, my God, and by us being marriage counselors, my God, my God, we have already declared war on every spirit. Every false agenda that has come against God made marriage. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We, we, we honor you, Apostle. Thank God for you. Thank God for your wife. We appreciate what God is doing in your life, in your marriage. We're in this thing. I wanna I wanna show you something. I wanna show you something. When you understand contribution. We now have to leave what God calls the form or shares with us as a form and head to the frame. Listen at me, because there's this big shift. When we get to a place called contribution, we have to leave the form and come to the frame. 
So you have to understand that the frame is the underlying constructional system or structure that gives shape or strength. In order to have a healthy, wealthy, wise, strong marriage, there has to be good structure. There has to be something that gives it shape, that gives it strength. So there are three things that we have to consider for the frame. And we want to deal with each of them, hopefully, tonight. First thing is we want to deal with perspective. When we look at contribution and we come to this frame, we look at perspective. And perspective is what can you offer? Chief Apostle Smith said something that is huge to me. We talked about uh, being able to push your mate, being able to push them. Uh, overseer said that, that that God didn't make the the wife to sit around. He made her to be a help. So this is the thing we have to consider. Please hear this. What is your perspective? In other words, what can you offer? And when I speak of what can you offer, I'm speaking mentally. What can you offer? Because some people are mentally off. They're not mentally ill. They're just mentally off. And the reason they are mentally off is because of the way they were raised. They're mentally off because of the things that they were taught that they think still hold to today. We must understand that times change. Customs change. Needs change. And if you stuck on what great grandmama did back then and it didn't work for her and great great grandpa, then how do you think Sticking with what they did is going to work for you now. What do you offer? What is your mentality? What do you believe about marriage? What do you believe about the relationship? What do you believe about what the man should do? What do you believe about the woman should do? See, because you got a problem if you think the man is supposed to do it all. you got a problem if you think the woman is supposed to do all the cleaning and the cooking. Oh, come on. Y'all get in here with me on this. Y'all get in here about this perspective. Well, you know, and talking about contribution, leaving con- we have to leave the form and go to the frame. Contribution becomes vital because the level of success of your marriage, the relationship in and of itself, is really predicated on how much you're willing to invest. And I like a biblical principle out of Luke 6.38, which says, Give and it shall be given unto you good measure, down, taken together over. And the whole bottom line, I'm stopping right there for a reason, because that principle tells you that even in your marriage, when you're willing to give yourself 100% and put your your best foot forward, you can expect that the investment factor is vital in marriage. And a lot of folk, and I like how uh, 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 Apostle uh, uh, Thomas said that they're declaring war on every spirit that opposes God's covenant of marriage. One of the things in the covenant of marriage is dwelling together, working together. He said something, and I can 1,000% agree with him. Uh, Sister Richard and I do so many things together. It's to the point where there are times when I'll start a sentence and she'll finish it or vice versa. Now, you know, that is a, a knitting of the spirit. And to me, folk have to get back to the place and point where they want to know their significant other, their spouse, to the place where they almost can tell. You're not going to tell exactly what she's thinking or what he's thinking, but your spirits are so well connected to the point that she doesn't even have to really tell you what she's thinking because you pick her up in your spirit. You carry her in your heart. So when you get to the frame, you have to make sure that there is a strong weld or a strong bond between you. You have to make sure that the substance that holds you together is of the God nature. Amen. Come on, Chief Apostle. Well, there's, there's so much good stuff being said. Uh, I, I, I really, I really uh, want to 
jump on the back of, of a false government and, and just say that in this hour, and, and on the back of Apostle Whitlow, I, I will mm. say in, in the book of Leviticus, and I think I've said this before, the reason why most young men of this day and hour cannot hold down a home because they never lasted through the training at their own home. Yep. I, I'm going to go back to Leviticus now. I told y'all before, Leviticus teaches that a young man should be out of the house by at least age 25. But when he goes, he ought to know how to cook. He ought to know how to wash the dishes. He ought to know how to iron clothes. He ought to know how to clean the house. He ought to know how to take care of bills and save money and do business and all of this. Then it turns around and said that the young lady to stay home watching her mother be a wife to her father so that when she leaves home, she knows how to submit, but yet be a wife that knows how to build with her husband. You don't believe it, go read it. Now watch this. Here's the problem. Parents are now throwing kids out the house at age 16, 17, 18, talking about I can't control them, talking about this, that, the other. Can I just tell the real, unadulterated truth tonight? Don't throw them out because they remind you of you. I said that. I don't care what you can talk about all the stuff they've done all you want to. The real truth is you threw them out because you are tired of looking at you at young age. But Amen. the only problem is mama and daddy didn't throw you out. They whooped the hell out of you. That's what happened. Because the Bible says the rod of correction will drive the foolishness out of the child. That's what it says. Now, if we get back to the word, our lives would be better, our homes would be better, and we would okay. find people that would get married with the right information and get married for the right reasons, and we would not have the problems that we have. So what you're saying what? is that their perspective, so what you're saying is their perspective should be directly a result of what God says in his word. In his word. In his word. Okay. And, if, and, and watch this now. If our homes would get back to being church homes, oh, if our homes would get back to being family prayer, if our homes would get back to being a place where the word is read and not read for being wrapped up, oh, Lord Jesus. If our, mm-hmm. if, if our homes would get back, amen, to drinking the spirit of God, amen, and not uh, 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 corona, hallelujah, amen, <laughs> or, 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 amen, or Mad Dog 2020, because it's even sad in this hour that the kids and the parents are now sitting together getting drunk. Amen. That's, That's exactly what's going on. I, 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 want, you, I want you to, the marriage, the marriage today is in trouble because the training ground is in trouble. Oh, well, uh, uh-oh. If I enjoy, yes, there really is, and there are some homes and some families that are still doing it the old-fashioned way, but there are a lot of them. The training ground has become a playground. Mama and Daddy, well, let me say it like this. You might as well, since we're being raw, I'm going to be raw and I'm going to be real. When 
for daddy's taking his son to the strip club and they picking up and I'm sorry for whoever's listening. I'm not trying to be super saved tonight. I'm trying to be real. You hear these things, you talk to people that have done these things and you run across people who have spoken of these things. When daddy's grabbing his son and taking him to uh the strip club and they grab a couple of holes and they go get motel six they bed just side by side, and they try and call themselves wailing on their tail. That is not crazy. I'm sorry. I'm going to be real about it. When mama is teaching you how to arc, arc it the right way so he can get the full effect, we got some problems here, you know? You got to understand your bosoms is just about to jump out of your blouse, and you got a shirt that once belonged to your baby sister. Your little looking thong with the skid marks all up on it. Honey, we got some issues here. We've got to go back to training all over again. Um, here's the thing. Let's, let's consider again that the frame is the underlying constructional system or structure that gives shape or strength. So, in other words, perspective is determined by what has been your structure your mental your mentality is based upon what has been your structure so if your mother and father weren't structured in the word of god then their marriage won't be structured in the word of god and so you'll have this mindset where you might be a male chauvinist, or mm. you might be, or or you you might be, uh, what do they call a woman? Uh, uh, that you you might just be so critical and condemning towards a man that you might just do more damage before you can even get started. See, because if you're not committed to the development of each other. You're not gonna benefit each other. So you so so and when I speak of your perspective, I'm also talking about is your mind strong enough to handle the changes and challenges that marriage will bring? Because there are some things that's gonna come up in marriage that are inevitable. What happens when he wants a child and you don't wanna lose your figure? What what happens when he wants to be a vegetarian and you want to continue being a, a meat eater? Uh, 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 what what happens when his faith is challenged and he no longer wants to be a Protestant? He now wants to be a Muslim. These are things that you have to consider. What is your perspective? What is your what is your mind looking like? Can I just be truthful? A lot of people. Their mind is unhealthy. Yes. Wait, yes. and what? What can I? I want to go even further than that. I want to go even further than that. It becomes a whole lot more tragic <laughs> to deal with if you've already been married, than been divorced, or suffered a loss of a of a spouse through death. You became a widow, and then you try to marry again. Because now your mind and your perspective is set, is set a certain way, and you're sitting here, you have expectations that are not being met, and you're looking for experiences that are not, not coming to pass. And so now you're saying, wait a minute, this ain't the thing for me. It's not that it's not the thing for you, it's that mentally you're not in the right place for it. All right. That's what, it, that's what I'm getting at. Come on, come uh, on. Uh, talk to me. On, uh, social media, I know we're running out of time, but our dear sister Glenda, who she should know, she has the, has the privilege of calling in when she gets ready. I'm going to say it again so she hears me clearly. Has the privilege of calling in when she gets ready. She says, I am who I am today because of who I was raised under, and I thank God for my grandmother. There was structure. Amen. Now, I know exactly what 
talking about because I was raised by my grandmother for the first five, six years of my life. And a lot of what I've probably known, spiritually speaking, came from her and was enhanced by my own mother. But I bless God for grandmothers, those grandmothers back in the day who took you to church, who took time to read Bible stories to you, who took time to tell some of their testimony. They may not have told everything, but they told enough to cause you to be fascinated with where they've been and what God has done with them. That's the wisdom that this generation is missing. That's the wisdom that this generation can't seem to grab a hold of. I'm sorry. If the best way to grow corn is to dig a hole and plant a seed, I don't think we're ever going to be able to change that. This manufactured corn might kill you. Come on. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate her because she's a product of someone who gave her a good perspective. Amen. Your perspective is no good. Watch this. I'm not even rushing this right now. Your perspective is no good if you're not made to see anything. Let me say that again. Your perspective is no good if you're not made to see anything. See, the problem is that we deal, Lord Jesus, oh boy, I'm about to get in trouble. We deal with a lot of shallow folk. We deal with a lot of shallow folk. They have no depth to themselves. They have no depth to their mentality. They are shallow. And the moment you say boo, they have a fit because they don't have no structure in their perspective. They haven't been made to see anything that will help them to develop and become beneficial to who they're with. You gotta be you gotta be mentally strong to deal with changes of people. You gotta be mentally strong to deal with a man who deals with all kinds of people. You gotta be mentally strong to deal with a woman who goes through I'ma say it, who goes through PMS, DMS and AMS. Okay, what did he just say? You gotta you gotta be mentally strong to deal with a woman with pre mental syndrome, during mental menstrual syndrome, and after menstrual syndrome. Yeah, I know y'all don't like it, but it's the truth because she'll flip on you and while you're trying to figure out out, you won't understand why she done flipped. Uh oh, I done lost half of my people. Now you have it. Here's the reality: if you don't have the right perspective, if you don't know how to treat them as delicate, if you don't know how to treat them as important and special, you're gonna miss something. Somebody calling in with a 908 area code. Please identify yourself. You know who that is? Praise God. This is Glenda Johnson. How's Dude, everyone God tonight? You. Woman of God. You God bless you. Apostle, that's Apostle. our girl. He is. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right. You there? What, what happened? Did she leave us already? There you go. Oh, I'm, no, right I'm here. I, di- I didn't hear you. Oh, we want you to talk no, to her. Wait. What you what your take is and what you're thinking. Okay, uh, he was talking about uh, the the young women, correct? Mm-hmm. Amen. Okay, he was talking about the women and uh, how it's, it, it's definitely changed. Uh, we were just talking to someone tonight about how this generation has really changed. Uh, just at school the other night, uh, I had to go on <laughs> the floor. I had my own class, but I had to go on the floor and um, one of the teachers, I guess, they they didn't tell anyone that there wasn't a teacher until about an hour later. And uh, so these students were out there doing their own thing. They were uh, taking customers without signing and so forth. So I had to go and handle the situation. And one young lady took money. I asked for the money, and she totally disrespected me, and I had to tell her she needed to sign out. She didn't want to sign out. I mean, she was just disrespect. And and you know, and I I I sympathize with the the teachers, the um, the public school teachers. I'm a cosmetology teacher, but I sympathize because 
the it's the it, it's got to be the home it's got to be the home training it's got to be what's happening at home what's not happening at home um one of the young ladies uh, a couple of years ago uh when i was on the floor she was cussing and and i told her, i said you know you can't cuss in this class and she said well you know my mother don't tell me what to do and uh, okay. and i said well i'm not your mother but you're not going to be uh, using profanity in this class And do you know and, and, and I'm sad to tell you guys This but within a matter Of weeks This girl got killed in an accident My mm. god And it's sad to say that I had to Remember her by How she talked to me You know what I'm saying um, How she mm-hmm. came off I mean she was okay with me You know after that and so forth But I still stood my ground And told her you know uh, what she wasn't going to do, and uh, in a matter of weeks she lost her life uh, right, in in a car accident. Yeah, you know, but um, but I I believe it's the home training. I believe that it's either someone maybe it's the absenteeism at the home where you know parents are working, they're busy, and they're not taking the time to take time out with these kids and to to teach them how to be respectful to uh, adults or people in authority. Uh, Because this young girl that I had to tell to sign out the other night, she uh, told somebody she wasn't going nowhere. Because anytime you sign a a student out, they have to leave the premises. And uh, so they called me. If she don't leave the premises, we're going to have to call the cops. And um, so when she got word of that, she left. You know, and then I, you know, and, and then there was another lady on the floor uh, uh, making a whole lot of uh, negative comments. And I told somebody, I said, I'm not scared. The only person I'm scared of is God. So she can say what she wants to. I don't care who she, but she's not going to disrespect me on this floor. <laughs> Amen. So, but it, it's, I think it's, we have a loss, we have a lack of, okay. of, what is it? Integrity, a lack of yep. respect. I think uh-huh. there's uh I think that's not there anymore. Uh I, I'm not gonna say anymore, but you know, but those who are not in Christ, you know, it's a sad story. It's a sad story today, you know. You're not in Christ and somebody was saying, Well, you know, with this scare with the coronavirus, well, you know, uh, if you're in Christ, you know, God said it uh what fear? Fear and faith can't they can't sit in the same um, sentence, correct? So, you right. can I? Uh, I'm sorry. Go I'm, ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say apostle. So I know it's that time, but it's funny she makes mention of the fact of fear and faith. There are some people that live their marriages in that regard. You know, try to show on the outside and demonstrate to the public faith but actually live in fear. And that creates a chaotic situation because if you have children in that marriage, they see you from, they they see Mm -hmm. every aspect of what you're doing when you're in church, and they know how you are when you're not in church. I'm talking about the physical building in and of itself. So already we have it. marriage people, we have to present ourselves in a way that Presents the kingdom of God, it both in public as well as in private. Do you agree with that, sir? That's right. That's right. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. But so, again, how did it start? These, these are the, the, when the structure is off. There can be no shape given to the relationship, specifically the marriage. If there's no I agree. structure. There can be no strength given to right. the structure or to the perspective. See, this is what we're talking about. This is why this perspective is so important. How do you see it? Mentally, how do you see it? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as an asset or do you see yourself as a liability? Who oh, you good. are linking, who you are covenanting with. Is that an asset That's or right. is that a liability? Do you not know 
Some people are only seeking to get close enough to do damage. That's right. Some people <laughs> do not have your your best interest at heart. I mean, just no, they don't. some folks are only looking to see how far they can go and see how much they can do. I declare. I was married to a woman one time, and all she did was see how far she could go with me to see what I would do if I would put my hand on her, if I would choke the life out of her. She would try me, and, and then she saw that I wouldn't do it. It, it bothered her, and so then she wouldn't want to be bothered with me. I mean, so, but it's, it's the perspective that I had because of what my mother and father instilled. And I thank God that my parents were godly parents. I thank God that they were they were pastors. Amen. They were preachers. They were leaders. I thank God because let me say something. And, this is, and, and, and while it's a good thing, it is also caused the flip side to become a problem. Watch this. When I was in when I was a teenager in church, you know, us, 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 us preachers kids, we wanted to be like some of the other kids in the church. We wanted to have a girlfriend. We wanted to have a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I wanted my girlfriend. Yes, I showed up, kid. And I had, and I wanted to be the one who had the words to tell her so that she would want me. So when I finally got up the strength to get, get up, go on my first date, bless the Lord. My daddy was so he was so happy for me, so proud of me. He said, "Son, I'm gonna give you the money for your first date." I went on the first oh, date, went to the movie, mm-hmm. had some, went to eat, talked to the young lady. I'll never forget what the young lady said to me. She said, "I don't have a problem with you being a preacher's kid." She said, "My problem with you is that you will never have enough money for me because I'm a drainer." Mm. <laughs> Wow. Oh, no, no problem. Wow. No problem. A drainer. I don't want a drainer. That's okay. Guess what? She ain't married today because she's a drainer. Wait well, a minute. You know what? Go a little further. <laughs> go ahead. Hold on. Hold on. I want to go a little further. So I wanted to be serious with the young lady. I'm about I'm about eighteen, nineteen, somewhere around there. I want to be serious with the young lady at the church. My mama said, "Son, don't do that." Uh-uh. Said, why, Mom? She said, she said because if you get serious with this one, she said all the others are gonna leave because they're gonna be jealous. She said, learn to be <laughs> friends with all of them and learn to respect all of them. Learn to love all of them, and when the time is right, the right one will stand out. Amen. I, I learned so. So my perspective perspective became respecting all of them. That was my perspective because I had to give them all the opportunity to see if they had potential to be what I needed to be. And Amen. granted, I may have never, I, I never married any one of them, and it's okay, but the principle that was instilled made me respect each and every one of them as if they all had potential. So my mentality mm-hmm. was not that of I just want you and that's going to be it. No, my mentality is I'm going to study you to make sure you are going to be the Amen. Amen. And I'm so sick and tired of people who are not studying folks. They just trying to get in and get out. It don't work like that. Okay. Go ahead. I was going to say, you were far better than I was around 17, 18, because I, I too, uh, I wasn't a PK, but, uh, you know, I hung out with PKs. And there was one young lady in our church, I thought I was fond of her. She was of a mixed race, but, hey, I thought she was cute. And don't laugh at me, please, y'all. I was good <laughs> with her from February until November. Come the first week of December, I'm trying to figure out how to ditch this chick because I ain't buying no Christmas presents. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just being real. And this young lady was such a high quality and a high standard, uh, not meaning that she demanded a lot, but she carried herself in that fashion. The first year I did that, I got away with it. After Christmas, we got back together, and then the next Christmas came, and I tried to go back and repeat myself, and she said, I ain't got time for shouting. Just like that. I ain't got time. And it made me really look at what I was doing. Why am I running away from this woman because I don't want to buy her a present? What was I really saying? 
Honestly, think about that. What was I? <laughs> we got folk who still do this same thing. Everything is good as long as they don't have to do anything that's going to cost right. them anything. We talked about what that's real right. love is back a few weeks ago. And I gave my description when I said love is a desire to give at one's own expense because it's love's desire to give. And I, you know, I might have told her that I loved her, that I was in love with her, but I literally was lying to this young lady because I wasn't in love with her. I was infatuated with her. I was intrigued exactly. with her. And yeah. At age 18, I was just beginning to figure out what my weapon of mass destruction was. I think I was trying to see if I could help her lose her Victoria's Secret. Didn't work out. But the point is, I still back to this particular day because that second time around, taught me a valuable lesson about relationships in general. And that's really all I want to share with you on that. I mean, it, it's important. You know, when you're talking about perspective, having the right perspective will put you in a position where you'll know exactly how to deal with any situation or any circumstance that comes up. And trust me, if you're married, you are going to have some situations and you are going to have some circumstances. Apostle, in that in, in that uh, discourse that uh, overseer just gave us, I was sitting here thinking, my mother and father talking about being guided and 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 all that. My mother and father, my father died. Uh, just as we crossed over into the year, and I still call it uh, that that amount of years because we crossed over into it. My mother and father were together 50 years Amen. when he passed. And wow. I looked at their example of prayer of walking before God, building family and ministry, ministry and family. I mm-hmm. watch them provide for us. I watch how my father, even the man kind of stuff, I watch my father pay the bill and, and, and take care of insurance and all this. My mother, did, when my father died, if he had not had a conversation with her about the insurance papers and things of this sort, she wouldn't even know where to look because he handled all that. Mm-hmm. She, did, she was a working woman. She could have put in if she wanted to. And I know sometimes he wanted to do, but he never had. But the thing about it is this. He took care of the family, even to the extent we were grown men and women. But if we picked mm. up the phone and said, Dad, we stuck at the mall, what, 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 what door are you at? Mm. In a few minutes, Dad's sitting outside. Let's go. Mm. <laughs> you know? If you're, wow. on the highway, if you're on the highway and your and your car done cocked out, all dad wants to know where you're at. Wow, that's what amazing. I'm saying is we we had a, an example that was bar none. Mm-hmm. And if anybody has ever told me after living in a house with a with a fifty year example that I would go through what I've been through, I would have called them a liar. Come on. Because of the example Mm -hmm. I had. Mm -hmm. But now here's here's where I'm I'm going. Just because you got the example don't mean you got the lesson now. Uh Uh-oh. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. (laughs) And and, and, And it comes to me quite often my father said to me one day after a friend of mine had come over to the house and I asked him 
Would you like something to eat? Just be a courteous. Like I had seen my parents. I didn't know the boy was going to eat the whole pot of turkey leg. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Uh-huh. When my mother and father got home ready to finish the meal and realized they had to cook a whole meal, they looking at me and saying, because now when they get home, he gone. <laughs> they looking at me talking about now I know you ain't that here ain't no whole bottom circulate. I said look look I said no I just I said you one came over I was just being kind and I asked them to have some and they just kept having some until it was gone. <laughs> my father, my father said to me that day, no whooping, no cussing, no no none of that because they didn't do that. But my father whooped me in a way that day that it had never left my mind. Come he on. said, son, mm-hmm. he said, son, get wise. And I don't mean potato chips. All right. See, how the Richard can laugh because he knows my daddy. Exactly. He said, son, mm-hmm. he said, son you got to get wise. And I don't mean mm-hmm. that shit. Hey, hey, you know, there were some things that my father dropped on me. Uh, you know, that if mm-hmm. I had taken the whole package and yeah. put it in my head and my heart, I could have avoided mm-hmm. a whole lot of things. Well, you mm-hmm. ain't by yourself. You ain't That's by yourself. See, so I, know, I, just like, to say, I just wanted to say that you are a broadcasting audience. I don't want I don't want to sit here and sound like the old perfect apostle. This is not one of them TV shows <laughs> where everybody trying to act like they're married and so happy for all their life. I want you to understand I done made some mistakes, had some mistakes made to me. I done had some things mm. done, amen. But I want you to understand every situation I've gotten into, the words of my mother and father's Wisdom of marriage always come back to mm. you. Mm. And so if God this, yeah. bless me, if God bless me to ever do it again, I want the Lord to baptize me in that wisdom so it'll be done until I die. Amen. 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 We bring up learn a, something from everything, we, right? We, we, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, I'm watching the time, Apostle. It got away from me again. We are literally at the midnight hour, sir. I do apologize. If I'm your timekeeper, I done messed up twice. Don't fire me. <laughs> it, was just, it was just getting good. That's well, all. <laughs> well, well, you know, you know, you know went out there for four or five offerings. Yeah, well, you know, I was trying to get them so we can fit. We need to, build, we need to add some room to the sanctuary because the church is enlarging. Don't you help? <laughs> hey, hell, I'd rather the church. I'd rather the church enlarge than hell. Yeah, I want the church to be larger than hell. Trying to shrink hell. But, uh, to ch- but, but, Come on, sir. but to our uh, to our listening audience, we 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 are literally out of time, and we thank you so much for joining us. We had some complications getting started tonight due to technical difficulties, but when we got started, oh, thanks be to God, the things he allowed us to share, we pray that it has been helpful, beneficial. We want you to join us next Saturday for more of Making Marriage Meaningful. I will be here. I'm your host, Apostle Urban Whitlow. I believe my covenant brothers will be here. Overseer Elder Ernest Richard and Chief Apostle Vincent L. Smith. I'm hoping that this wonderful woman of God, Sister Gwendolyn, will come back and be with us again. Amen. We're going to try to pull some more because we want 
we want we don't want you just to hear everything that men we as men have to say. We want to hear from some of these women who have been through some things, who've got some things to offer. Okay? Because we've gone from this form to this frame because of this fellowship and what we're now contributing. We want to make sure that you come with the right stuff. As we're getting ready to leave, please remember your marriage will always be meaningless until your mate becomes meaningful. Please oh, join us amen. next week again in Jesus' name. Keep it, Kim. Come on, hit that track. We out. We love you. Good night. Wash amen. your hands. Amen. If you don't want good coronavirus, night. wash your hands in Jesus' name. <laughs> good night. God bless. Amen. God bless. It's not worth wasting time on things you can't change. Love. Nothing personal, you